Hello everyone, welcome to Secondary Weekly, where I try to highlight some news stories from the previous week that you may have missed or flew under the radar. If you're interested, all sources and other information will be listed in the description. Now, let's dive into this week's stories. South Carolina could join Mississippi, Oklahoma, and Utah as the only states where execution by firing squad is an option. Due to a lack of supply of the drugs that are usually used for lethal injection, state lawmakers are considering reinstituting the electric chair or firing squad. The proposed change has already been approved as a bill by the state house. Only three inmates in the U.S. have been executed by firing squad since the 1970s, one of whom requested the act to be done. Proponents of the bill say the firing squad is much easier and more humane than the complications that arise with lethal injection. The Environmental Protection Agency has proposed a phase down of the use of hydrofluorocarbons, a group of serious greenhouse gases. Commonly known as HFCs, the gases are widely used in refrigerators, air conditioners, and other appliances for cooling. The EPA has already compiled a list of new options that appliance manufacturers may use for refrigerants. Through the use of the American Innovation and Manufacturing Act, the phase down will see a reduction of HFCs by 85% in the next 15 years in the US. Much of Belgium, including its government, universities, and scientific institutions, were the target of a massive coordinated cyber attack on Tuesday. The unknown hackers overloaded the country's servers with data, cutting off internet access to millions for most of the day. Belnet, the company that supplies the internet to all of these institutions, said there was no indication that the hackers infiltrated the network and no data was stolen. Oxitec, a firm based out of the UK, has released genetically modified mosquitoes into the wild in Florida for the first time. The objective is to eradicate a specific species of mosquito that can carry Zika, Dengue, and Yellow Fever. The modified male mosquitoes, which do not bite humans, will mate with female mosquitoes and pass on a gene that kills female offspring. The male offspring will survive and continue to mate and spread the gene throughout the population. Although experiencing obstacles from local residents, the alternative approach to insecticides has already been greenlit by the EPA and is being tested in several South American countries. Next, I will wrap up with Highly Curious. The world's longest pedestrian suspension bridge has opened for public use in Portugal. The bridge is constructed out of metal grating, allowing you to look straight down to the Pava River 250 feet below. A massive seven foot long, 240 pound sturgeon was caught by scientists in the Detroit River, reigniting hopes that the fish's population has been staging a comeback after battling destruction of habitat and overfishing. A couple discovered a live World War II era Japanese bomb in their garden in Missouri. The bomb was disposed of by the Air Force, but how it ended up in their garden is still a mystery. DNA tests recently confirmed the first identity of the remains of a member of Sir John Franklin's 1845 expedition to discover the Northwest Passage. The wreckage of the doomed voyage, which inspired Mark Twain and the AMC series The Terror, was discovered in just 2014. Finally, make sure to check out this video by the Washington Post that takes a look at some new US airlines that are getting started during the pandemic. And that's gonna be all for this week. Let me know down in the comments which story you guys thought was the most interesting or if there was anything that I may have missed. If you guys enjoyed the video, it would be awesome if you could like and subscribe. And of course, have a great week.